This tutorial walks you through the steps to request access to control data in dbGaP. Overall, there are four steps. The first, which is covered in this video, is your application for access. The second step is the approval process. The third is downloading the data. And the fourth requires that you either close out the project or renew it annually. The close out and renew steps each have their own video tutorials. I'll start on the dbGaP homepage by clicking this link, Apply for Controlled Access Data. Here you can learn how to set up an account at NIH's ERA Commons, or go directly to the login page. I've logged in, and we are now looking at my mock project request, and I'll go ahead and click Create New Research Project. It's a good idea to read the section before you get started to be sure that you have the information you will need and of course read the user code of conduct. When you're ready, click Begin New Research Project. You will step through these tabs where the darkened tab is the page you are currently on and you can access pages where the tab label is blue. By the way, this link to the Office of Management and Budget control number refers to the public reporting burden for this process. Since I started a new project, I have to first choose the data sets that I want to access. Study names are roughly alphabetical. I'll scroll down and check this IBD only study. Note that this consent group requires Institutional Review Board or IRB approval. We'll see later on, on the Review Data Use Certificate page, how to attach that approval document. I'll also select this ARIDS data set, then scroll down to the bottom and click Add Selected and Continue. Here you will input your project details. On all of these pages, fields with an asterisk must be completed, and the blue question mark links offer good advice on what to include in a field and also how that information will be used by dbGaP. I'll complete the required fields, select a signing official, and supply a decryption password. If you need to save your work so far, click Save. I'll move to the next step by clicking Save and Continue. If you have no collaborators, you can skip this step. If you are adding external collaborators, that is, those from other institutions, be aware that they must submit a separate data access request, and uncheck the box for none to fill in the required fields. I'm not adding any here, so I'll go up and click the IT Director tab. Notice that you now have access to the last two tabs. You can use these pages at any time, for example, the Data Security page allows you to reset your decryption password. At least one IT director is required, and basically this is someone responsible for the computer systems where the data sets are to be stored. I've added my director, so I'll click Save and Continue. For this video, I started a new project and selected my data sets in the first step, so I have skipped to Confirm Data Sets. I'm satisfied with these consent groups, so I'll just click Continue and we stress that you carefully review the data use certificates at this point. This is where you would upload any required documents. In my example, that would be the IRB approval form for the NIDDK study. Notice that the files must be in PDF format. I'll click Continue. I must now affirm that I've read and agree with the terms of the data use limitations for my data sets. So I'll check these boxes and click the I Agree button. We're now in the last step. Here you should review your application and either approve or revise it. I'll check these boxes to approve and submit my application to the signing official. You will receive emails at each step of the approval process and you can come back at any time to check the status on the My Requests page.